I'm Peggy Potrose. Do you remember me? I sure do, Peggy. The last time I saw you, I replaced your G-tube after it fell out. How's it going? Not so good. I got a new tube last month, but now the f***ing thing's clogged. Oh, that sucks. How'd that happen? Well, it's one of those smaller tubes, and I guess Brad, my pool boy, didn't flush it after one of my feedings. He's so hot, I forgave him immediately. Do you want me to remove the clogged one and just replace it like I did last time? Sometimes that's easiest. Well, it's a really unusual size, so you might not have a replacement. Plus, it's really expensive. Can you just unclog it? Hmm, well, I do know a few tricks that might work. Such as? Allow me to demonstrate using this model. The black board represents your abdominal wall. This is the outside, this is the inside. The tube goes through the abdominal wall right here, and there's a bolster keeping it up against the abdominal wall here on the exterior, and inside the abdominal wall is a little balloon keeping it from sliding back out. TZ, I guess you could say I have washboard abs after all. <laughs> You're hilarious, Peggy. So, how can you fix it? Well, you can always start off by just trying to flush the tube with a Tumi syringe, uh, like this one, with warm water in it. Sometimes that works. Yeah, Brad tried that. He pushed hard on that plunger until his hot young flesh was glistening with sweat. It didn't work, though. We can also try breaking up the clog a little bit. Usually, feedings get crusted right at the abdominal wall. We can sometimes slide back the bolster a little bit and then take two pencils or two syringes and, and firmly but gently um, squish the tubing over and over again, trying to crunch up any clog that's in there before you try flushing it again. Well, what if that doesn't work? Well, the next step is to try and flush the tube out with special liquids. A lot of people like carbonated beverages, like colas, which you can usually find in the department or at the nearest vending machine. How do you get the cola all the way down to the clog? The entire tube is filled with Brad's fermented Ensure milkshake. Well, the cola will reach there eventually if you give it enough time, but I like to speed things along by sucking out as much of the feeding as I can with a pediatric feeding tube, like a 5 French. You can also use a really skinny suction catheter if you have one small enough, or even a really long angiocath. That tickles. Once you've got all the extra feedings out, you can use that same skinny five French feeding tube, whatever you got, to actually put your carbonated beverage back in the tube so it's right adjacent to the clock. Does it always work? Usually. Sometimes in tough cases, I'll get a little pancreatic enzyme sent up from the pharmacy in the hospital such as Creon is one brand name. You gotta remember that these enzymes normally operate under alkaline conditions. So when you get the pancreatic enzyme powder, you can dissolve it in some saline, but try and add a couple of drops of sodium bicarb to the mixture, then put it into the G-tube and let it sit there for 30 minutes. With a little luck, the enzyme will munch away at that clog and it'll flush easily. Mm, what else you got? You can take a three-way stopcock and what we call a Christmas tree adapter. This is something that your respiratory technicians should easily be able to get for you. And you screw the Christmas tree adapter into the three-way stopcock and put it into the feeding tube. Then through one of the ports in the three-way stopcock, you add as much of your carbonated beverage or whatever you're going to use as you can. Then you lock that port on the stopcock. Then you take a small syringe, like a 3cc syringe, and this is important, filled with liquid, not air, and attach it to the other port on the three-way stopcock and plunge it back and forth. This creates uh, much higher pressures, which sometimes can dislodge a really tough clock. Stopcock? Plunging over and over? Oh, I'm so turned on. I gotta tell Brad about this. So, what's your last ditch technique? I, I don't wanna tell you. Aw, oh, come on, don't be shy. Well, it's a little controversial and a lot of people might not approve of it. And I would only do it if the uh, benefit outweighed the risk. You can tell Peggy. I'm very good at keeping secrets. 
Just ask Brad. Well, it is possible to use the guide wire from a central line kit to break up the clock. No! Don't several famous ER procedure books suggest caution against that very idea? Well, they do advise caution because there's always that theoretical risk of the wire causing injury to the patient. On the other hand, there are lots of commercial devices out there for unclogging G-tubes that are just as likely to cause injury. And we do put guide wires into much more delicate structures like blood vessels all the time. Well, do you take any steps to make it extra safe? Brad certainly does. I sure do. I basically measure the wire from the outside of the tube all the way up to the abdominal wall. Then I add on about two centimeters of length. This should keep the entire length of the wire within the plastic tubing so it never contacts any human tissue. Yeah, that seems pretty safe to me. Then you just gently tap the clog over and over. You can even do sort of a twisty, cranky motion like this. It can take up to 15 minutes to disrupt the clog, but then it'll finally flush through. Oh, yes! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, tee -hee. you're so dreamy and smart. You can clean out my pipes anytime. Oh shucks, Peggy. Hey, is there any chance that you and I and Brad could all meet up and maybe get to know each other a little bit better sometime? If you know what I mean? Sorry, baby. Peggy doesn't do charity work.